Chat asked, why is Divine Flesh good? Divine Flesh. POE, let's go take a look at this reel first. We need to read it, and then we need to like, we know what it does, and then we need to know what it actually does, right? And how to build around it. Divine Flesh, all damage taken bypasses energy shield. This means that you can't play CI. Can't play low life, can't play energy shield, can't play hybrid. You're just a life-based build. Maybe your mind over matter. LA damage taken as chaos damage, plus 10 to maximum chaos res. This got nerfed, and the, uh, the Gamepedia thing wiki here does not reflect it. Currently, it's only plus five to maximum chaos res. This is in Heist League. So uh, why does this work? If you want to know why plus maximum resistance is good, you can take a look at the other TLDR videos that we've done in the past. The uh, The real explanation is this. As you increase 100% resistance, um, each, each 1% additional resistance that you get is increasingly uh, powerful. The best way to think about this, even though elemental resistance, all resistance, is capped at 90%, it's been this way for maybe a year and a half at this point. Um, if you uh, if you want to understand why is each one additional percent maximum resistance increasingly powerful, think about it from the opposite way. Going from 99% resistance to 100% resistance, you are increasing how much uh, resistance you have by like an exponential amount, right? You're going from taking literally any damage to taking literally zero damage, right? So going from 99 to 100 is absurd, right? Done. Now, if you're going from 98% resistance to 99% to, uh, resistance, then you're mitigating half of the damage, right? So you're taking 50% less damage than you would be otherwise. If you think about going from 97% to 98%, then you have, uh, you're mitigating 33% of the damage, right? So every every 1% increased maximum resistance that you have is increasingly powerful, right? And it follows this curve here. It's got some kind of math name. Maybe it's quadratic. Maybe it's exponential. Listen, I don't know. But you know, because you're smarter than me. So this is why plus maximum resistance is strong. Um, when you convert to a different element, uh, so Divine Flesh, remember it says that you're taking elemental damage as chaos damage. When you're converting, you ignore things like penetration, right? Penetration and curses, curses that lower your resistance, elemental weakness, things like that. Um, if an enemy, like maybe Shaper, Shaper has an attack, his balls like penetrate 20% cold frazz. But if you take cold damage as chaos, uh, as chaos damage instead, like with Divine Flesh here, then you're mitigating the penetration portion of whatever the attack is, like the Shaper, like the, the Frostbolt balls that he shoots at you. Um, and then when you have plus five maximum resistance, remember this is plus five, not plus 10. Your, if your chaos res is uh, is eighty percent, and all of your other resistances are at seventy five percent, well, then you're following this curve, right? So it makes it better for you to mitigate these resist or to mitigate this kind of damage. Um, the way that I describe uh, divine flesh is, I say that it's one of the best reasons to be a life based build, and it's also one of the best single layers of defense in the game. Um, back uh, before Heist League, when it was actually plus ten to maximum chaos resistance, it was absolutely absurd it was like oh my god absurd um now it's only plus five but it's still extremely good because you can scale other ways to get plus maximum resistances you could have like um like Saffle's frame for example in the game here uh, i'm gonna move my head real quick this is plus four to all maximum resistances it doesn't say elemental resistance it's plus four all resistances right i think soul of steel has the same text on it oh this has elemental so this one does not work right this is elemental resistances but this one is all resistances. So anything that you can do to raise your your normal 75, let's go like this, your normal, <clears throat> your normal 75%, that's that's the, the normal maximum resistance you can have. Um, with Divine Flesh, it goes to 80%. If you use a Saffles Frame, it goes to 84%. If you have Born of Chaos somewhere on your skill tree, which is one of the notables that can get converted when you're using a uh, Timeless Jewel, right? Maybe you get like plus one maximum chaos res. Maybe it goes to 85 with that. Maybe you have a small cluster jewel that gives you plus three maximum chaos resistance. Um, that'd be like a small cluster jewel, right? It's one of the notables on those. So that can go from 85 up to 88. And like, again, we're following this curve here, right? So like the higher you get this to go, the more busted it is. So how do you play a divine flesh build? Well, you need chaos res. Currently in game, my little chieftain here is only at four. So that's not so good. But before I put on the uh, the the jewel here, the um, 
sacrifice in the name of Zibakwa. If I put this on the tree next to a cluster jewel, or sorry, next to a keystone, it becomes divine flesh. It just like transforms the skill tree. When I do that, um, I want to uh, max my chaos res. So I want I want chaos res on gear. Like this. Ooh, except maybe like maybe, maybe less sloppy handwriting. Good. Chaos res on gear. I also want anything that says plus max resistance, right? Any kind of plus max resistance or plus maximum chaos res is awesome. And then on top of that, there's one more thing that I really want. I want Fizz taken as Ellie, right? So Divine Flesh, all it does is say elemental damage taken as chaos damage. But you can make this way, way stronger if you have some sort of physical damage taken as elemental damage, right? So if you have maybe from the Chieftain Ascendancy for me here, right? My Ascendancy automatically gives me physical damage taken as fire damage. So if Fizz taken as fire, uh, then the fire will be taken as chaos. It's a lot of mitigation that goes from that. Um, if I want to, maybe I could use a, a helmet that has physical damage. Oops, let's go like this. Maybe I could use a helmet that has like Fizz taking as fire, Fizz taking as lightning. I could use a lightning coil, which is like 25 chaos for a six link, but I don't have enough dexterity for it. Um, I could use a lightning coil that says Fizz taking as lightning. I could use a crystal vault that says Fizz taking as cold damage. I could try to craft something that says Fizz taking as, uh, fizz taking as elemental. Another option, oftentimes, um, I, I actually think one of the best ways that you can use divine flesh, um, the keystone in general, is on a... What is it? It's a it's a scourge arrow. How do you spell scourge? Scourge arrow uh, pathfinder. So the scourge arrow pathfinder, you get to use the uh, unique item dark scorn. So let me show this to you real quick, and you're gonna kind of understand how you can layer these uh, these kinds of defenses. So dark scorn says physical damage to converted to chaos damage. That doesn't matter. Hold on, I highlighted the wrong line. This one, physical damage from hits taken as chaos damage. So if you have fizz taken as chaos. You could also, hmm, you could get a a hunter chess piece that has maybe you crafted it with like a pristine and a uh, and an aberrant fossil, and maybe your hunter chess piece has fizz taken as chaos, and maybe your helmet also has fizz taken as chaos, and maybe you're playing scourge arrow pathfinder um, using a dark scorn, and maybe you you also have like fizz taken as chaos on your bow. Like this is fizz taken as chaos, and then from divine flesh you have Ellie taken as chaos. And then following this curve right here, you have 90% because you stacked up all those layers that we talked about already, right? So when you're stacking this up, you have 90, maybe 85, maybe 88, maybe 90% maximum chaos res. And all of a sudden you're absurdly tanky. And like that is, that is why this is so good. Like it's good by itself. It makes you play the game well. It makes you stack up chaos res, which you should be doing anyways. Um, it helps with conversion mechanics. It makes you want to build things like uh, Fizz taking as Ellie or Fizz taking as Chaos. It makes you want to use a Taste of Hate. It's just, this is excellent. Don't forget to mention Incandescent Heart. We can do that as well. Incandescent Heart, you've seen this in the past. Incandescent Heart. Even if you're not using this thing offensively, you can still use this thing defensively. Um, back in the day, you used to see people try to use like Incandescent Heart on maybe a, like a BV Occultist, Blade Vortex Occultist. And um, they would go CI with this, and then you'd have like elemental damage from hits taken as chaos damage. This was like a great way for a CI build, and it still is, to mitigate damage. So now on this thing, I think I think this has been updated. I don't think it says elemental damage as extra chaos. I think this is elemental damage from attacks. I think this got updated. In any case, we're interested in the defense, so let's only talk about the defense here. Looks like the wiki might be out of date. Um, Ellie taken as chaos. Let's say that you were playing a... I don't know, uh, like a tectonic slam chieftain, right? And you have a bunch of maximum chaos res and you're using divine flesh. You could just wear this thing. So elemental damage taken as chaos. Normally for a life based build, that might be a little scary if you don't have chaos res. But if you're stacking up maximum chaos res, if you convert uh, elemental damage taken as chaos, if you have 75%, 50 from divine flesh, 25 from right here, if you have 75% of elemental damage taken as chaos res, and then 90% maximum chaos res, that's busted. That's so, so, so good. Other things that you might want to think about, um, there's there's an alternate, this is kind of spicy actually. There's an alternate quality, God, what is it? I think it's, is it Pestilent Strike? It might be something else. It's the one that incubates. What's that? Is it is it Plague Bear? There's an alternate quality Plague Bear that I got introduced during a uh, Heist League. You might even think about that. It says, while you're incubating, take reduced, Take reduced chaos damage. 
So you, you don't you don't even have to pop that thing, right? You just have it passively incubating. You have elemental damage taken as chaos damage, and then you have this this alternate quality thing that just like lowers how much chaos damage you're taking. And you're taking Fizz's chaos, and you're taking Elliot's chaos, and you're taking like Chaos's chaos. So damn. That that right there is a layer of defense. If you played if you played your divine flesh build, let's say you also have a recover life on block glancing blows kind of thing. Let's say you're also like maybe your dodge, maybe your Kintsugi plus uh acro phase acro and divine flesh here. Maybe you have divine flesh plus I don't know, even just like a bunch of leech or like maybe some life gain on hit, maybe some reduced damage taken from for or yeah, reduced damage taken from fortify. Like all of these things is is less less damage taken from fortify. All those things really stack up well, right? So it's not like Divine Flesh fixes all your problems. Okay, it kind of does, but Divine Flesh, in my opinion, is one of the best uh, single layers of defense in the game. Remember, defense is all about layers, right? But the best single layer of defense in the game, I think so. Um, and it's one of the best reasons to be a life base build. So like, yeah, you can talk about the Doriani Keystone, which has like life gain as extra maximum energy shield. And like you take damage as life and you take damage as energy shield. And that's kind of cool, right? But like, damn, Divine Flesh is really good.